moving towards drawing it to a close. I want to make one last call, particularly if there's any people of colour who would like to speak about their experiences. Don't worry if you're not used to speaking, come up and speak. Everyone who's done it so far has been fantastic. So you'd be, it would be great to close with you. Uh, I'm going to have to start. Other than that, I'm just going to have, I think, one or two more speeches and we'll also throw in the song. So, okay. Are you coming to the chip? Okay, um, Ruth Coppinger, do you want to say a few words? Okay. As I say, we're moving. This is Ruth Coppinger for the TV. Okay, I want to commend everybody for coming in today because over the last week a number of people have felt under threat and have had to cancel. I've attended two protests in Blanchardstown where I was a TD for six years and a councillor and remain a representative. And they've been very successful, very well run and well supported. One in four people in Blanchardstown, in the greater Blanchardstown area, was born outside Ireland. It's the most multiracial, uh, multi-ethnic constituency of the country. We've had a spate of racist graffiti throughout uh, housing estates in the last week, ten days. And the idea that racism is not an ever-present and daily threat for young people in the area is completely wrong. I just want to say very quickly a couple of things. We are at a turning point in, this, in the world whereby an event that's happened before in the US this time has sparked something has broken. But it's also sparked an international youth movement where young people worldwide, 50,000 people marched in Austria the other evening. Young people this generation are not willing to tolerate racism. They're also not willing to tolerate sexism or homophobia, or all of the other sick uh, hatred and injustice. That's a daily reality for many people. And homelessness as well. Thank you very much. They certainly won't accept that either. I just want to say as well that there's a myth in Ireland that there's only a couple of politicians That time I stood up in the door when Noel Grealish started his anti-Nigerian it's Finna Fall, it's their councillors who every single day of the week oppose traffic halting sites and you know they're stalking horses for the more virulent racism that we've seen in Ireland. Lastly, the movement that we're seeing in the US is now becoming a very radical, a very working class, a very racial movement. Malcolm X made the point, you can't have racism. Capitalism, the very, the very DNA of capitalism is built on inequality. The idea that eight people control the same wealth as half the planet suggests that some people are more important than others and legitimizes all of the other prejudice that's there throughout society against people of color, uh, black people, different ethnic groups, against women and so on. I would like to invite anybody who is interested to take part in a Zoom uh, meeting that we're having on Monday on the ideas, the revolutionary ideas of Malcolm X and to begin, let's, th let's this be the start of something, not just we're all here to protest, we all go home. We need to build uh, a movement that's very uh, radical, that's very working class, that will see many changes in society such as the man mentioned against our housing crisis as well. So I'd ask anyone who's interested to come up to for the link and for some of the other people who are here. Thank you very much and well done. Okay, thank you Ruth. Right, we're moving to conclude. We've got two more speakers, I'm really pleased. Malak, young black